Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service here in Strathdon, our service of worship for the third Sunday of Advent. Um, you're most welcome whether you're here with us in the church or whether you're watching the recording of the service later on. Now, today here in Strathdon, there's a first. All the new audiovisual equipment has been installed. And as you gentlemen are there, many thanks to Paul and Dick for all your time and effort in that. And thank you for, for running today. This is a bit of a test run, just to see how everything will happen. So all the words of the hymns and the responses will appear on the screen. Um, if you would prefer to use the hymn books, then I'll announce the hymn numbers and you can have, and the responses are on the printed order of service. Now, for regular visitors here to Strathdon, you may have noticed a couple of additions. This here, for example, this beautiful uh, nativity scene here was donated to the parish by the family of our dear friend Gladys Cruikshank from Afford. Now, Gladys was a, a very well kent face in the area and always such a great supporter of the church. She sadly passed away back in the summer. Um, and the family have donated this beautiful um, nativity scene for us here. Also, this candelabra and single candle holder were made by former resident of Tuch, Stuart Mortimer, uh, a renowned artistic wood turner who now lives in Hampshire. It was made in loving memory of his mother Mary Henderson from Tonley in Tuch, who sadly died in 2002. Now, the candelabra is used every Sunday in Advent and at Christmas, obviously, in Took Church. But as Took Church is now closed, uh, with Stuart kind permission, it's been gifted here to Strathdon. And we are most grateful for that. So thank you very much indeed. Um, there will be refreshments served in the church hall afterwards, so I do hope that you will be able to stay for that. There are also still lots of children's books and Christmas ornaments and, and various things, Helen, aren't there? For sale by, by donation. So please have a little wander around the hall while you're there. Now the tradition for the third Sunday of Advent includes lighting a third cam uh, candle, which is the candle of joy. And on the third Sunday of Advent we read, we pray and reflect on the joy that God's plan gives us, foretold by the prophets and fulfilled by the life and death of Christ. We meditate the promise of Christ's second coming and his glory-filled return. Now, the third Sunday of Advent is traditionally called Gaudete Sunday. Gaudete is the Latin word for rejoice. And this Sunday is the time for us to rejoice because Jesus came and died so that we might live forever with him. Gaudete, Gaudete, Christus est nato, et Maria Vergine, Gaudete. And that's the chorus of a 16th century Finnish hymn, Sacred Christmas Carol, which was also a hit by uh, 1972 by the, the folk band Steel Eyes Span, if you remember it. The translation is rejoice, rejoice. Christ is born of the Virgin Mary, rejoice. So we're now gonna rejoice this morning um, as we come together in our hearts and mind and worship God. Our call to worship is based on um, Isaiah 12, verses 2 to 6. Surely God is our salvation. We will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is our strength and our defense. He has become our salvation. With joy we will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day we will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, Make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for all for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud, and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among us. He is coming in the power and gentleness of the Spirit. We will always rejoice. He is bringing good news to the poor. We will never stop praying. He is binding up the brokenhearted. We will give thanks in every circumstance. He is proclaiming liberty to captives and release to prisoners 
So we will not quench the spirit nor despise the words of the prophets, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. For God has promised and God is faithful. So now we're going to sing to God our first uh, Advent hymn. Lo, he comes with clouds descending. If you follow this in the hymn book, it's number 477. Thank you, Kathleen. This Sunday is a time to rejoice because Jesus came and died so that we may live forever with him. 
So let us rejoice as we come together on our hearts and minds to worship God. It's a time for reflection. As a Christian, we reflect on our relationship with our Father God. And during that four Sundays in Advent, we concentrate on four different aspects of that relationship. On the first Sunday, we looked at the hope of Christ. On the second Sunday, we talked about the peace of Christ. And we had our first look at the uh, person of John the Baptist. Today, the third Sunday, is all about the joy of Christ. And we look further into John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way for Christ. The candle today is also known as the shepherd's candle. As the shepherds were told by the angels that the news they sang about would bring great joy to all people. Now, could I have, please, a volunteer to come and light our Advent wreath? Laura, do you want to? You want to? On this third Sunday of Advent, as we think about the coming of Jesus Christ, we light the candle of joy. When Christ comes into our lives, he brings fullness of joy. He anoints our hearts with the oil of gladness. When Jesus was born, the angels said that his coming was good news of great joy for all people. Advent is the season of joy. We hope for Emmanuel, God with us who knows us more than we know ourselves and brings us life abundant and everlasting joy. Let us pray. For the desert places in which we walk, the streets we roam, the paths we cross, guide our feet, Advent Lord. Take us to places where you would go. Give us words that you would use, that in this Advent season of promise and preparation, we might point the way with John the Baptist to the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And now we're going to sing the um, three verses of our Advent candle hymn. Remain seated for this. of Christ is hope. In all our darkness, Christ is shining, leading upward faith, refining hope, hope, hope. The light of Christ is hope. gift of Christ is peace. We walk with God our past forgiven, face all fears in him, believing peace, peace, peace. The gift of Christ is peace. We praise you, Christ, with joy. As a whole in treasure, highest call in deepest pleasure, joy, joy, joy. We praise you, Christ, with joy. Our first reading this morning is a responsive reading. It's Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. 
The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves. <laughs> We're now going to come close to our Advent Lord with our prayers of approach and of confession. So let us pray. Advent Lord, you invite us to come to you rejoicing. Rejoicing that your kingdom is near. Rejoicing that your promise is true. Rejoicing that here you welcome us, children of the living God, co-creators with you in the world. Advent Lord, our hearts praise you this Advent time as we remember the excitement and expectation of a new baby. A baby who would bring hope, wonder and the promise of new life. A baby who would be the fulfilment of promises made long before his birth. A baby who would change the world. A baby who would bring health and new possibilities to those who sought him and to those who did not. Advent Lord, on this third Sunday in Advent, we gather together in our hearts and minds and offer our praise and our worship. For the face of the infant Jesus, we recognize that you have come among us to rescue us and to bless us. We are humbled by such goodness towards us, and we contemplate our unworthiness to receive such a gift. Advent Lord, with joy you brought us into being, you created the world and called it good, and yet we have done so much to quell that goodness. We have fought with one another and failed to live in peace. We have shut out the stranger and the immigrant. We have ignored the needy and judged the poor. We have fallen short of your command to be your beloved community. Forgive us, Advent Lord, and bring us back to the joy that we find in you. Cleansed, restored, forgiven and renewed, may we be for you your prophet, prophetic voice in this generation. Your voice crying out in the wilderness of this our world. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. So bless our worship. Teach us from your word and hear our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. Now I'm going to invite Dick to come and uh, read for us, please. Second reading is from... First book of Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 16 to 28, from the New International Version. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Brothers and sisters, pray for us. Greet all God's people with a holy kiss. I charge you before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers and sisters. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Third reading is John chapter 1, verses 5 to 9 and 19 to 28. And again from the New International Version. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not, not the light. He came only as a witness to the light, the true light that gives light to everyone who was coming into the world. Now this was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him who he was. He did not fail to confess, but confessed freely, I am not the Messiah. 
They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Finally they said, Who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied in the words of Isaiah the prophet, I am the voice of one calling in the wilderness. Make straight the way for the Lord. Now the Pharisees who had been sent questioned him, Why then do you baptize if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? I baptize with water, John replied, but among you stands one who you do not know. He is the one who comes after me, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. This all happened at Bethany, on the other side of the Jordan, where John was baptizing. Thanks be to God. Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ. Come with the frightened, come with the poor. Come with the children. Come with those who have always been your friends. Come and lead us to where you are living and show us what you want us to do. Come to us, Lord Jesus Christ. Come as we search the scriptures and see God's hidden purpose. Come as we walk the lonely road needing a companion. Come when life's mysteries and perplexes us. Come into our disappointments and unease. Come at the table where we share our food and our hopes. And coming, open our eyes to recognize you. Long expected of the prophets, Lord Jesus Christ, come and set your people free. And now we sing on again another Advent hymn, and this time it's come, their long expected Jesus. If you're following it in the hymn book, it's number 472. Thank you, Kathleen. Joy. Joy may be like a fountain, but it has no on off switch. We cannot manufacture joy or produce it on demand. Running after joy is like running after the wind, you can't catch it. Joy is wild and treasured, like a rare, shy bird that suddenly appears. It can be fleeting, or its presence can rest with you like a benediction for days and months. It shows up in the strangest of places and just as quickly disappears. The moment you try to hold on to it, it flees away. 
In the hand of a dying man released from suffering, in the eyes of a new mother cuddling her newborn baby. Was that joy or something like it? In our Good Friday world where death is our constant companion, God holds out a hand with surprisingly little fingers. God is with us. So here we are on the third Sunday of Advent. And this time next week, we'll be on the eve of Christmas Day. On the eve of the most momentous event in all of history. And over this next week, we will hear the old familiar readings. We'll sing with smiles on our faces our favourite Christmas carols. Without perhaps thinking of the meaning. We will marvel at the sight of sparkly lights and decorations, or the smell of mulled wine or Christmas pudding. The old familiar message of Christmas. But do we still experience the joy of the season? When we reach this annual celebration of Christ's birth, do we still experience the exhilaration of those first shepherds? Is the joy of Christ in us? Or perhaps has the flame dimmed? If so, why is that? Why is it not still glowing brightly? It's the same message and the same joy that we heard from probably our school days and our Sunday school days. So what has happened to change that? Some people will say that life got in the way. Some people would also say that Christmas is just for children. And I must admit it's been a great pleasure this past week to be to several school performances up and down the parish and see the, the joy in the children's eyes. Now it's difficult not to be overwhelmed by what we see going on around about us, what we see in our television screens of wars and conflict and bitter strife. We all face rising prices, and for many this Christmas will be very, very stressful. Some of us would have faced the loss of a loved one over this past year. So where, I would ask, is the joy in that. How can we maintain the joy of the season with everything else that's going on around about us? What is joy after all? As well as a time of preparation, Advent is also a time of reflection. And I would suggest it's so easy to get swept away with all the the busyness of the season, with all the preparations for Christmas, that we forget exactly what we are preparing for. It's not making sure that we've got the turkey ready, that we've got everything, all the presents bought, that we've, we've got cards written and posted on time before the last posting date. What are we actually preparing for? The birth of a baby that will change everything. And John the Baptist, as we've heard, comes to prepare the way. He dominates Advent like no other character at all. He, he gets a starring role in two out of four Sundays. Although he is a, a, a contemporary of Jesus, and, and in some um, descriptions he's, he's a sort of cousin, a related cousin to him. He just comes in as a grown man, 30-something, a charismatic and prophetic leader who's gathering a new religious movement in the desert. He's dressed to impress. In camel hair, with a leather belt, he eats locusts and wild honey. His preaching is fierce. He calls on people to repent, and he marks this by plunging them into the River Jordan. He's a central figure in our Advent celebrations and our Advent preparations. He's the key figure in the New Testament to prepare everyone for Jesus coming and really that's I suppose what Advent is all about 
As I mentioned in my service in Lumsden last week, he burst into Advent and was not afraid of challenging the establishment or the established religions. He's a holy troublemaker, if you want to call him that, prophet speaking truth to power. Someone who gains a following amongst the people and is a thorn in the side of the powerful civic and religious leaders. He's also a bit of a performance artist, really. He acts out his message in dramatic ways. He dresses what he eats, where he lives, the ritual of baptism. All of these point to a radical change that is underway. It's not a change that was there before. This is something new. This is coming into the world, a new religion. He's a preacher, a witness pointing to Jesus, to the one whose life and work will bring new and greater possibilities for transforming lives. The Lamb of God, as he calls him, who takes away the sins of the world. There is part of this time of preparation where we think about the second coming of Christ when he arrives in glory. John was the voice in the wilderness preparing for the way for the first coming of Christ and we as Christians are to be the voice in our generation for the second coming of Christ. And really when you look at what John was saying how he went about things, what he did, how he did it. It was really a call to wake up and take notice for the savior of the world is near. It's time for celebration, a time of joy. Isaiah 35 verse 10. Those who have been ransomed by the Lord will return. They will enter Jerusalem singing, crowned with everlasting joy. Sorrow and mourning will disappear, and they will be filled with joy and gladness. Now, I asked the question earlier on, did I not, that how can we maintain the joy of the season with everything that's going on round and about us? There's one key word that must always be there in our preparations for Advent and our preparations for Christmas, and that is trust. We must trust in the Lord, that the ways that he's, he's leading us. And it's difficult, isn't it, within our parish where we've seen now three of our beloved church buildings effectively closed for worship. It's difficult to see, well, where is that taking us? Where is God leading us? What message do we get from that? And Isaiah He talks about trusting God and following his ways. We'll become ransomed people and he will crown us with everlasting joy. All our sorrow and all our mourning will disappear and we will be filled with joy and gladness. It's not just being filled with joy and gladness, it's telling people about it. That prophetic voice in the wilderness, telling people to prepare the way for the Lord. Look, listen, wait, get ready, for I bring you a handful of stories of angels and messages, of Elizabeth and Mary, of dreams and visions. God of my looking, help me look well for your coming. Look, listen, wait, get ready, for I bring you a box full of stories of lights and darkness, of lamps and pathways, of stars and stables. God of my listening, help me to listen well for your coming. Look, listen, wait, get ready, for I bring you a cart full of stories of gifts and travelers, of donkeys and camels, of preciousness and anticipation. God of my waiting, help me to wait well for your coming. Look, listen, wait, get ready, for I bring you a life full of stories of mangers and babies, of shepherds and kings, of a saviour and Christmas. God of my readiness, help me to be ready for your coming. 
So over this next week, we will still hear the old familiar readings. We will still sing our own favourite Christmas carols. We will still marvel at the sight of sparkly lights and decorations. And we will still enjoy the smell of mulled wine and Christmas pudding. Now I mentioned earlier that the third candle of Advent is also known as the shepherd's candle. So this year, this year, let us read those familiar readings and sing those favourite carols with the joy and the anticipation of those first shepherds when they heard the good news. We are given salvation through our belief in Christ. Surely that is something to be joyful and to celebrate. Is Christmas just for the children? No. It's for everyone to engage with the message that Christ brings. It's salvation for all who believe. So on this, the third Sunday of Advent, we wait with anticipation for the coming of our Saviour. And now we're going to stand and sing our next hymn. Thy kingdom come on bended knee, the passing ages pray, and faithful souls have yearned to see on earth that kingdom's day. Thy kingdom come on bended knee, which is number 473. Thank you, Kathleen. Our prayer of dedication is on the order service, and I believe it will come up on the screen as well. So as you dedicate our offering to the glory of God, we pray together, saying, God of great wonders, we join with you in the joy of giving. You give us life and breath. You fill the world with beauty, our hands with bounty, and our hearts with a desire to give. 
Accept these gifts and ourselves in your service. Amen. Now, in our service from Lumsden last week, I included in our prayers for intercession a prayer for peace written by Christian Aid. And as peace is so desperately needed, particularly in the Middle East, then I've included it in our prayers today. So um, let us come close to God with our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray. Advent Lord, may your glory be revealed and all people see it together. We thank you today for those like John the Baptist, who have the courage to stand up and speak out against evil and injustice. Those who are ready, if necessary, to stand alone for their convictions, enduring mockery and rejection, sacrifice and status and security, willing to risk everything for what they believe to be right. We thank you for their vision, their determination, their willingness to be a voice in the wilderness. Advent Lord, we thank you for those who have the compassion and concern for others to reach out and bring help, ministering to the sick, comforting the bereaved, visiting the lonely, providing for the poor, giving hope to the oppressed, bringing laughter to the sorrowful. We thank you for their dedication, their understanding, their goodness and their willingness to speak your word in the wilderness. Advent Lord, you call to us to reach out to your broken world, to those walking in darkness, wrestling with despair, craving affection, thirsting to find purpose in their lives. Give us faith, wisdom, tenderness and love to meet that challenge. Help us to venture into the wilderness ourselves and there gently but confidently to speak your word of life. May your glory be revealed and all people see it together. Advent Lord, help all who are in difficulties today, the sick and the suffering, the anxious and the anguished, the fearful and the frightened, the guilty and the grieving, the distressed and the dying. As we prepare to celebrate the season of love with our friends and family, we hold a special place in our hearts for all those who will be on their own this Christmas. And we thank you for all those who are willing, opening their hearts and their doors to those for whom the Christmas season is not one of joyful celebration. We remember all those for whom life is a daily struggle. And we pray for all those families who are finding it difficult to manage with the cost of living crisis. As temperatures drop, we pray for all those who are homeless, without shelter or adequate clothing. And we remember the parts of our world which are suffering from drought or from famine. And now the Christian aid prayer, prayer for peace. God, hear our prayers for peace in the Middle East. May all people in the region be protected safe from harm. We pray that this crisis will end now with no further loss of life. God, may the injured and distressed know your healing presence. May the powerful and decision makers follow the paths of justice, mercy and of peace. We pray for recognition of the dignity and value of every life. May the clamour of violence cease, replaced by the beating of swords into ploughshares. Heavenly Father, we continue to remember in our hearts and minds our brothers and sisters in Ukraine. And we pray for peace this Advent time. We pray for an immediate end to violence, that diplomatic solutions will be found that will lead to lasting peace in that region. The people who have fled their homes will be able to return, and what has been destroyed, rebuilt. And now at a moment of silence, Lord, we bring our personal prayers to you. Those people in situations known to us who need your special love today. We give thanks for those who have died in faith, especially those known to us, who have entered into the joy and peace of your nearer presence. Grant that we may follow their example and come to share with them the glory of everlasting life. Thank you for the promise of the season of Advent. May hope, peace, joy and love dwell within our hearts 
And hear us now, Advent Lord, as we come together in the words which your Son taught us. We pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So just a few uh, notices before we finish our service. There are cards with all our Christmas services on. Please, please take one away of you if you haven't had one already. Um, at 2 o'clock this afternoon, there is the Christmas service in Tully Nestle Church. And at 3 o'clock here in Strathon is our family Christingle service. And during that service, we'll be able to sing a couple of carols. We'll be able to uh, hear the story of Christingle and actually make our own Christingle, which we will take away uh, to our homes. Um, so it's a family one, but again, open to all. Please, please come along at three o'clock this afternoon. In Arford at 6.30 this evening, there are community carols outside the Hockton uh, in conjunction with St Andrew's Episcopal Church. Uh, tomorrow, uh, Monday the 18th, at half past two in the church hall in Afford, West Gordon Guild will meet for a demonstration of Christmas teacups. And all are welcome. If you fancy coming along and listen to some carols and some children singing carols, then tomorrow night, 6.30 in Rhiney Church, the uh, school are coming in with their carol service. And I've had a taster of that already. It's really, really good. So 6.30 tomorrow evening in Rhiney Church. Um, and 7 o'clock, there are Christmas carols in Keg Church. More carols and more singing, this time in Lumsden. And on Tuesday night at six o'clock, Lumsden School are meeting for community carols. And they usually meet and form up behind the Christmas tree in the square in Lumsden. And please let the weather be okay, because otherwise it's not very really pleasant. But they'll have um, tea, coffee, and, and refreshments afterwards as well. For, for more indoor things on Friday, uh, 11 o'clock in Tuch, the Tuch's church, Tuch School are coming into the church for their Christmas service, and in Tawi, and that's at 1.45 on Friday afternoon as a Christmas service in Tawi Church. If you're on the email list, I'll, I'll send it out and you'll remind you of all these things as well. And then, of course, we're in the next Sunday, um, Christmas Eve, um, and as well as our morning services, we have... Um, community carol singing in Afford at 11 and a watch night service here in Strathdon and in Afford at 11.30 and on Christmas day itself at 10 o'clock the services both in Afford and Strathdon so again I was just, I'll send, you, send emails out with all, the, with all the information on so as we come to the end of our service here in Strathdon many thanks for joining us here uh, thank you Kathleen for playing for us and Dick for for reading to us and Helen for helping with the lighting the candles thank you very much indeed I'd also like to thank uh, Paul and Dick for um, operating all our equipment now, I hope everything's worked fine I know that the live feed didn't work but still that's something we can go on so again thank you gentlemen for your for your time and again um, just to remind you there are refreshments after the service if you're if you want to have a look and look at the, the Christmas books and various things that are available there. Now our final hymn this morning might, might be a new one to many of us, but I, you will know the tune, definitely. And I think that the words are so fitting as we approach the week leading up to Christmas. Now I was listening to Classic FM on Thursday morning. I was in the car travelling somewhere, I can't remember, I seem to spend my life in the car at the moment. Um, and they played a new arrangement of an old classic carol, Away in a Manger. And this was by the young British composer, Lucy Walker. If you, if you ever get to listen to it, please have a listen to that. It's wonderful. It was much darker and reflective than the one that we normally sing, which seemed to emphasize the nature of the virgin birth, a child born into poverty. So our final hymn this morning, When Out of Poverty is Born, it's in hymn book number 291. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. 
out of poverty is born a dream that will not die a land less weary folk find strength to stand with heads held high is then we learn from those who wait to greet the promised day the lord is coming don't lose heart be blessed prepare the share their bread. They find their wealth an empty thing. Their spirits are not fed. For only just and tender love, the hungry soul will say. And so God's prophets echo still, be blessed, prepare the way. When God took flesh and came to earth, the world turned upside down. And in the strength of woman's faith, the word of life was born. She knew that God would raise the low, it pleased her to obey. Rejoice with Mary in the call, be blessed, prepare the way. Let us thank God for all the joy that we have in his presence. This Advent, let us pray that he will strengthen our faith and prepare the way for us to come to him. Father God, in this important week when we await the arrival of your son, the child of Bethlehem, we pray for opportunities to reveal your joy to those around about us and courage and guidance to know what to say and do to reflect your glory. Let us look forward to the joy and enjoy to the coming of our Saviour and welcome him with love and faith when he comes in glory. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us and all those who we love this Advent time, this Christmas time, and always. <laughs>